Hello everybody, today I'm going to be teaching you guys how to build a Zeal OS from source. Yes, we're building it, not just installing it from an ISO. And that's going to be necessary if you want to have the most up-to-date version of, in case whatever ISO you find on the internet does not have the latest commit. Because ISOs will no longer be hosted on the main repository anymore. And that's because the developer made a new build system that makes building ZOS much easier and he just doesn't want to ma manually commit an ISO every time and take up space. Because, you know, the ISO is 41 megs. Now you don't want to waste time like that. Uh, the build process requires you to have Linux installed. So if you're on Windows, don't worry, you can use a virtual machine to use these scripts. Uh, keep in mind, you're going to need to have a few uh, dependencies for this. You're going to need uh, Kimu. And it should be mentioned here. Let me see. It should be. It should be mentioned. So you would be running this. Uh, right here. Make sure you have these libraries for Kimo installed. Once you get and once you get that done, then you're golden. Uh, you should be ready to build. So when we go here. Make sure in your Linux VM when you make one, you have nested virtualization enabled. The way you can check for that is you check your virtualization Intel VT or AMD V slash RVI. And that's important because the way we build this involves, like I said, Kimu. And if you don't have this enabled, then you're going to get an error. And Nested virtualization, if you don't know, that means having a virtual machine within a virtual machine. All right. So. I got Kubuntu here. And, uh, oops. I got Kubuntu here. I already have all the dependencies. I'm going to just copy this. And then. Going to make a new folder. For that, shift F4, and then git clone. And yes, that's an advantage of using Kubuntu as opposed to some of the other um, Linux distros. In my experience, Kubuntu is more seamless with VMware. But yeah, as we wait for this, the whole point of having a new build system was was for the sake of enticing more developers. Was to entice more developers to get involved, make it easier for adding the source code outside of the context of like outside of ZLOS itself. You're used to using Notepad plus plus or Kate or Emacs, or Visual Studio Code, you can do that a lot more easily because the new script will basically compile whatever is in your source folder, as far as I understand. And if there's anything wrong, then either Kimu or within ZLOS itself, you'll see the problem, it'll give you the error message, and then you can re uh, fix the error, rebuild later, uh, much faster. And one other thing I'm going to say is that in case this doesn't work for you, for whatever reason, don't worry. I'm going to have like a, I'm going to try to at least have like a weekly or maybe a bi-weekly the upload of uh, 
Zero OS ISOs myself on a fourth. And I'll show you how to do that as well. But anyways, so right now we got this. We got what I got our folder. We gotta go to build. And I got a shift F4 here. Of course, that shift F4 is just a convenience that I can just open the folder from here. This is a Dolphin file manager specific thing. Um, most decent file explorers should have an option to just open from the directory. But, you know, if you don't, too bad. Learn a bit of Bash so you know how to CD and LS everywhere. Anyways, let's build it. Assume you have all your dependencies installed, so you gotta go, you gonna, you know, like, sudo, if you're on Ubuntu, it would be like, sudo app install, and then, all of these, you do, like, copy paste all of these, and you do control shift, uh, what the heck? Control shift V. Oh, yeah. <laughs> That's not what I intended. It was entered each one individually. Okay. Uh, cancel. Cool. But, you know, you get the idea. You would... You would copy paste. Like, if I did sudo app install to Kimu. Utils, I already got that installed, for example. But, yeah. Alright. Um dot slash build iso dot sh and as you can see it is working and one thing i gotta point out is that whatever cores you pass down to your linux vm kimu is going to detect so like, that's why, like you saw right there, oh, enter your password here. That's why you saw right there that it had, it showed six cores right up here. And um, that's because I got six cores or six threads really is what it's called for my uh, Linux VM and the Zeal OS. The Zeal OS VM within the, the Linux VM. So, one thing of note is that, as you can see, all the other threads are idle except one of them. One of them is being used with um, for this compilation and ISO generation. With that in mind, if you do not have that many cores and threads on your computer, Try to at least have two, because, you know, there's going to be one in the background that your Linux VM might want to use. And if you only gave your Linux VM one, then that's going to be a problem when your Kimu is trying to use that same thread. Basic stuff, but, you know... Don't make that mistake. Also, don't be uh, worried if you feel like the install has like frozen. It's not frozen. You can you can tell by the spinning logo, among other things, that it's not really frozen. It's doing its job. Even the clock is working fine. It just takes a while. And yes, there is nothing to type in other than this one time it asks for your password when you run the build ISO. You enter your password once and you don't need to touch anything. Even when over here it said press enter, don't worry about it. It'll do that automatically.
almost there. Let's see. And that raw file got turned into an ISO. And it's timestamped November 11th. What? I mean, no <laughs> November 7th at 9 o'clock, 9 p.m., 1908. 19 minutes and 8 seconds. So that's pretty cool. And now, one of the, one, once again, here's the genius of using a decent Linux distro when you're doing this whole thing, is that I don't need to upload this to Google Drive to just transfer it here. Watch this. Watch this. Uh, I'm going to copy that. And then I'm going to paste it here. Bam. We got we got it here. I, I, I did a previous build a few hours ago. And we have this here right now. So now I'm done with the Linux VM. We close out of that. And it should install uh, like before. But. Yeah, yeah let's try. Nah, there, there, there's nothing special. There's nothing special. If you want to see how you would install it in a VM where watch any other video, I'm not repeating this. Well, like, like watch one of my previous videos. It's the same exact process. Otherwise, nothing has changed. The only thing I'm going to add to this is me uploading this file to my fork repo. And to do that, it's very easy. Just gotta want to get clone. Oh, and I'm using a um, Minji W64 for the bash. So that's nice. And the the main problem with this is that you cannot use HTTPS for some reason. You gotta use HTTP. What the heck? Oh, sorry. Here. Let's do that again. And you can't use control shift V for some reason. That doesn't make any sense either. You have to copy paste with your mouse. All right. Let's see, okay, you know what? If this is gonna take a while, I might as well do both of them at the same time. Let's use faster. Oh, shoot the ram. Ah, <laughs> yes. Okay. All right, all right. Almost. It was almost at the same time. All right. Anyways. So, we got that. And I'm going to copy paste this to... this thing and then I'll get out. and then I'm gonna get add that long file name which I can probably copy paste it but 
sometimes like create oddities. So I'll just manually type it. Oh yeah, and make sure you do git add dash f. That was annoying when I tried first doing this. And now it's saying that doesn't exist. All right, fine. We'll try copy paste it. Oh, oh, oh. Here. All right. And you do git commit. And then over here, open up notepad for me. So I'll say. And then I'll close that. And then you do git push. Now I would use the GUI, but for some reason, uh, GitHub doesn't like it when you upload more than uh, like, like a file that's more than 25 megabytes through like the website. They prefer you to use the command line for that. Okay. So now I refresh this page and bam, it just drops. Yeah, I'm going to write just dropped. And of course we have this installed and yeah, so, some, some new things got added recently to zeal OS, like a gopher client. That, that's really cool, but I'm going to make a separate video about that. I won't, I won't, I won't mess with this. All right. So. Thank you guys for watching and I uh, hope you guys met further your interest in ZLOS even more. Start, start adding stuff, start developing, tell anyone you can to start developing this, it's like, like making applications for it and uh, see you guys later or maybe not. Hopefully I see you guys. Yeah. Bye.